Hi, I'm Tom with BIM for Interior Design and in this tutorial for Revit I will show you how to create a ladder family which is parametric so you can change the height of the ladder and the number of rungs adjust to the length, the height of the ladder. I will also show you how to create this parametric family with a shape handle like this and then you can just drag and drop and the uh, ladder adjusts its height. So let's start with my project where I don't have the ladder yet and I will create a new family and I will create a new metric generic model. The category of the ladder depends on you. You could set a different category but I set it as a generic model. First I will create some reference planes and I will set them so they are not references and I will create reference planes which will define the width and the depth of my letter so let's just change the scale and let's dimension these two three let's make it equal this will be the width of the letter this will be the depth of the letter uh, I can actually I will not make the depth parametric, so I can just straight uh, set up the depth and yeah, I can lock these. And the width will be parametric, so I will assign a parameter to this and I will name it ladder width. And let's leave it as a type. Now let's create new reference plane, which will define the width of the of the rails and again these will be non non-parametric so let's make them 40 again and let's lock both of these we have to lock them now let's take a look at the front elevation and we will set up a new reference plane which will define the height of the ladder now this is important. This reference plane has to be has to be either strong reference or I can set it as a top. To have the shape handle there, we have to have it as a top or strong reference plane. Now I will create dimension for the height and now it's important to which reference plane or reference level I I create this dimension. You can see that the reference level is highlighted here, so if I would create the dimension like this, the height wouldn't have the shape handle at the end. So I will delete this dimension and create a new one, and with the tab I will create the dimension up to this reference plane that is at the bottom. Okay, so that's quite important. Now let's make this another parameter. Let's make it lighter. And let's make it an instance parameter. Okay, let's just change it to some different value. Now we can create the rails. So in the reference level, I will create extrusion and it's just simple to extrusions one like this, one like this. I will let Revit automatically lock it to those reference planes that I created. And from my front view, I will drag it up to the ladder height reference plane and I have to lock it. Okay, so that then when I change the height, it stretches with the reference plane. Now, for the rungs, we will have to create a separate family. So I will save this family and I will save it to my desktop and I will name it ladder save and I will create a new family and again I will use the generic uh, generic model and this family will be just a simple rank so I will go to the left view and I will create a profile, actually extrusion of the rung and it will have circular profile 
with the center here at the center the diameter will be 40 so radius 20 and in the reference level this is how the rung looks like and I have to make it parametric so the width will stretch according to the letter width so I have to create again reference planes I will make them uh, let's make them again no reference one to the left one to the right let's dimension it as usual in Revit when you make something symmetric like this let's make this parameter and let's make it a uh, rung width and we can actually leave it as a type it depends now we will stretch the rung up to this reference plane lock it stretch the rung up to this reference plane lock it let's check that it's changing its dimensions oops that's too much yeah it's working well let's save this family again I'm on the desktop and I will name it uh, run. Okay, and let's close it and load it into our ladder family. Okay, in the floor plan, let's just place it somewhere, somewhere here at the random place. And first we will lock the run to this axis. So I will use, I will use a line tool and align it to the center and I have to lock it so it's aligned and then I will use align tool again to here and align it like this to set the width of the rung we will go to its uh, type properties because we created the width as a type parameter and we will click these dots here at rung width and we will create a new parameter and it will be run with, and with the, and this one is actually in the ladder family so it has got the same name but it's different and let's click ok and let's set up this uh, parameter run with with some formulas and because the rails are 40 millimeters wide we want to have the rung width 80 millimeters smaller than the letter width. So we will copy the letter width parameter, paste it here, and we will go minus 80 and make it OK. And now you can see that the rung width is adjusted. We can stretch the family. When we change the width to 800, you can see that the run width adjusts with the letter width. Now let's look at the front view and we will have to place the run up and we will actually create a new parameter. So I will dimension from here and I want to dimension to the axis of the run, but it's not snapping. That's because uh, when I created this family, the run family, I didn't check all of my axes. So I will go to edit family, look at the front view, and you can see that there's this reference level, which is not interesting to me, but then there's this reference plane, which is the axis. And when I click on it, it's set by default as not a reference, and I, I want to be it either strong or weak reference or it, it, it can be center elevation it doesn't matter which one you set but not a reference is not an option so we changed the we change it to center and now we load it into family again close and save okay overwrite the existing one family now when we dimension it is actually snapping to the center of the run so I can create this dimension and let's make this dimension parameter again so let's make it parameter and it should be let's make it instance 
and it will be one of set. Okay. And so now when we go to the family types and we change the rung offset to 300, you can see that the bottom rung is moving with the, with the parameter. So now we are going to use the array tool to create the other rungs. So let's select the first rung. Let's create array. And the important thing is to have it group and associate. We can first just uh, leave the number at two and create just random copy. Click here and click up here. And we can leave the number of rungs two. And because the uh, array is grouped, we can still click on one of the rungs and change the number. Let's change it to four. Let's change it to six and you can you can adjust the array even after you have created it so now we will create even the distance between between these rungs parametrics so i will create a line dimension from this axis to this axis just this one now we'll click it and now when i select the dimension and i assign the same rung offset parameter to it it adjusts all of the all of the rung distances in the array. Revit is warning me that I have created the constraints between uh, between geometry and not between reference planes. Usually, it's preferable to have parameters between reference planes, but here we have to set it so that so that it's between between the geometry as I've done it. It will it will be no problem for us here, so we can click OK. Now let's try flexing the family. So when we change the offset to 500, hit apply, you can see that the, the, the offset of the rungs changes properly. So it works as desired. But now we want to have the number of rungs to be dependent of the ladder height because when I change the ladder height oops, the number of rungs remains the same so how do we do that we click on one of the rungs and we have to parameterize the array so this uh, listening dimension opens up here and when I click it I can here in the label check none and change it to add parameter and i will name the parameter number of rungs and let's make it instance again let's click ok so now the number of rungs is parametric and we have to set it in the family types again here the number of rungs we have to set it dependent on the ladder height so I will copy this letter height. I will paste it here without the default. And the number of rungs is letter height divided by uh, rung offset. Okay. Inconsistent units. Yeah, it's telling me that the letter height is in millimeters and the number of rungs is integer. So I have to straight up. Uh, write it down divided by rung rung of set and this should make it this should make it proper and when i hit apply and you can see that the number of rungs is adjusted according to letter height and rung offset so when i change the letter height to 3000 you can see that the number of rungs changes to 12 now you can see that we have a problem with number of rungs because it's creating this one and when i change the letter height to 2900 and hit apply the rung is still here this is because revit is rounding this letter height divided by rung offset and it's rounding it either to the upper upper number or it, or to lower number and when it's 2900 divided by uh, by the rung offset 250 it it uh, 
it rounds it up to the higher number. So actually, we have to put parentheses here and we have to use the function round down. So it will always round it down. So when we hit apply, you can see that even though the number might be, let's say, 11.8 uh, or yep, it rounds it up to 11, not to 12. Now at first sight, this looks good, but when we change the letter height to 2500, you can see that because it's rounding down and it's, uh, it's full integer, it's number 10, it still makes this rung here. So actually, instead of round down, we will go to round up, which would make it a bit more strange because it always, or sometimes, well, yeah, always it makes another rung, which we don't want to have, uh, we don't want to have that there. So we will go round up, but actually we will go minus one. So we will make it that there's always a one rung less than the than the height and now even if it's 2500 the length of the letter it doesn't make the final rung here so it behaves properly so the letter is complete let's check it out let's save it and let's check it out how it works in our family uh, and our in our project so let's place it uh, let's place it here and you can see that in my 3d view i can i can change the letter width it's a type uh, family type property and i can change the i can change the letter height 4000 and the number of rungs is adjusted according to the height of the letter and also when i take a look at my east elevation with the letter you can see that because the height is the instance parameter there's the shape handle here and i can actually click and drag the shape handle and the height of the of the letter changes accordingly so i can snap it up to here and then i can change the height of the letter so this is how you make parametric ladder family using parametric array you can download the ladder family that i created in this tutorial for free on gumroad it will be linked in the description box below if this tutorial was helpful smash that like button and take care <laughs>